So one of the complaints that I frequently receive on my oil painting tutorials is that people can't afford it because it's way too expensive. If you are doing this for fun as a hobby because you enjoy it um, and you're on a budget then yes it can get a little bit pricey sometimes. Art materials aren't exactly cheap. Especially when you walk into an actual art store they tend to be a lot more expensive there. On the bright side, there are places like Michael's, which is a huge crafts department store in the United States. Um, I don't know if it's in other countries, honestly, I have no idea. I'm pretty sure they have coupons running, like, all the time. You can usually just Google Michael's coupon, you type in your zip code, and pick out your nearest store, and a lot of times they'll have a 40% off one item coupon. Sometimes they go as far as to make it 50%, and sometimes they'll also do 20% off your entire purchase. Personally, I would suggest buying most of your art materials online because that's where you can find the best deals. They're most affordable. Jerry's Artorama usually has a lot of sales and they have really good deals. You can get really awesome discount paintbrushes and wood panels, and I've used them a lot. Blick is another great one. They carry a lot of variety in these stores. As far as the oil paint itself, my suggestion would be to buy an introductory student grade set. So basically it will have all the essential colors. If you watched my oil painting basics video, I mention all the basic essential colors. An introductory set will usually have most of those. Um, or their equivalents. Those colors will give you a lot of opportunity for paintings. You can do realistic skin tones, you can do saturated skin tones, you can paint landscapes. Those colors are a really, really great foundation to start with and you can find a set that's affordable. The other thing, even though you're gonna be paying a little bit more than you would for acrylic paint, oil paint is gonna last you a lot longer. You're not gonna have to mix as much of it on your palette because it takes a while to dry so you can actually use up the paint that's on your palette more slowly and you're not gonna waste as much as you would with acrylic because it dries so freaking fast. Um, I remember buying like a really, really, really cheap one at Walmart. I think it was under $10 and it was like a Walmart off brand and the paint quality was just awful. Like it was disgusting. It was clumping. It was, it was, I don't, I don't know if it was oil paint. I feel like it was not oil paint. I feel like they just took a bunch of crap and then added a little bit of oil in there and we're like, look, oil paint. That's the thing with really, really cheap brands is the quality is going to suffer and you get what you pay for. If you invest into an actual student grade kit, um, kit, what am I saying, set, um, you will be able to save money eventually because the oil paint will last you a long time. Um, I remember with my first introductory set, that was how I started with oils. I think I spent like $40 and it lasted me years, honestly. Gamblin has a really awesome student grade introductory set, which is amazing quality. And it's only like $32 or $33 at Jerry's Artorama right now. It's on sale. I don't know how long that's going to last, but... And that is actually a really, really good deal for the quality that you're getting, for all the colors you're getting. It's a lot cheaper than buying all those colors separately. As far as palettes go, I remember walking into an art store and asking them about their glass palettes for oil paint, and the girl told me it was $20. $20 for a glass rectangle. Yeah. So I've been going to Dollar Tree or like dollar stores and thrift shops and buying their dirt cheap frames. This was a dollar. I just take the glass part out and this is my palette. I'll usually put like a piece of paper in the back. And these are my palettes. The only downside is that it's a bit of a thinner piece of glass, so you have to be careful. Um, you do want to tape the edges because they're sharp. You can... Ow. To clean them, you can get a glass scraper, which again, these are pretty cheap. I'm pretty sure they're like under $3. Razor blades are also really cheap. I am promoting some dangerous objects on here right now. You guys, please be careful, okay? Like, don't... And basically, you can just scrape the paint off once it dries or you could wipe it off when it's still wet, whatever you prefer. I usually just let it dry and scrape it off. So that's a really inexpensive, reusable palette for your oils. You don't have to spend $20 on a glass rectangle. Who does that though? Like, As far as mediums go, these can get a little bit pricey. So my favorite mediums are the Alkyd resins. They're flexible, they dry fast. I prefer Galkid, that is my favorite Alkyd resin medium. I've promoted it before. Um, I think at Jerry's it's like $8 or just somewhere in that range. 
for the smallest bottle. Um, so if you want um, your layers to dry more quickly, which is what I like to do uh, in like a day or two, I would suggest going with Alkyd Resin Mediums. If you don't have Gamblin products near you or shipping is unavailable to your country, I would suggest just going to your local art store and asking them about what kinds of Alkyd Resin mediums they have. You can also go with, you know, linseed oil or stand oil if you want to increase the drying time, but I don't work with oily mediums that often, honestly. It's kind of like a final layer type of deal and I still mix Alkyds in there, so. That part can be a little bit pricey, but that's still gonna last you a while. You know, you're not gonna be using those mediums excessively. It's something that you add in very gradually to your paint. Are mediums necessary? Are they an absolute requirement? Sorry if the light's changing. It's it's Florida. It gets cloudy and then it gets sunny again and then it rains five minutes later and then it's sunny again two minutes later. Anyway, are mediums necessary? I don't think so. No. I don't think they're necessary. You can absolutely get away with not using mediums. I would suggest getting some kind of solvent because you gotta clean your brushes somehow and that's the easiest way to do it. But when I started oil painting, I didn't have mediums. I actually didn't know what the heck I was doing. I didn't even know that what mediums were. I just got the paint because I knew I wanted to try it. And I had a canvas, I had my brushes, I had my oil paint and I'm like, Okay, that's exactly how it went. And in my personal opinion, I think you might be missing out. You know, at least if you never try it, you'll never know if you like them. But I just know that when I learned about mediums and solvents and things like that, and I started incorporating them into my work, my world got so much bigger. Once I started using mediums, I never went back to not using them. There's just so many possibilities, so many ways to use them. You'll never truly know until you experiment. An example of how I use Galkid with Gamsol, I have a video of that, um, how to layer in oil painting. I'll just put it somewhere here, I guess. So um, I'll also link it in the description. So if you want to know an example of how to use that, it's like a very easy, basic, simple rundown of how to mix mediums. You might try it out and find out that you don't actually want to use them and that's completely okay. It's entirely up to you how you use the paint. I don't believe in policing other people's methods or telling people how they need to make their art. It's up to you and what flows smoothly for you. So yeah, oh man, I went on a tangent there. Gamzol is actually pretty affordable, especially in Jerry's Artorama. And here's the awesome thing about Gamzol. You can recycle it, so you can actually use the same batch that you've been mixing your paint in many, many, many times. I also have a video about that, how to recycle your paint thinner. You should watch that, because it'll probably save you a lot of money because it saved me a lot of money. And you don't want to go with a hardware store brand, which is not at all designed to be used with art materials. It's more of a standard like industrial paint thinner, which I would not suggest to use. Not to mention it's so much more toxic. You just don't want to be around that. By the way guys, I have a horror story of how I accidentally swallowed paint thinner. If you want a story time about that, let me know in the comments, but that happened. But I lived, so <laughs> yeah. But yeah, go with an artist grade solvent. Um, Gamzol is an odorless mineral spirit solvent. It is the standard for a lot of classrooms and paint workshops because of the fact that it is the safest. If you don't have Gamzol in your area, in an art store near you, or if shipping is not available to where you are in the world, just go to your local art store and ask them what kinds of odorless mineral spirits solvents they have and they should be able to help you out. Surfaces to paint on. So, canvases and wood panels can get a little bit expensive. Once again, I would suggest ordering them from Blick or Jerry's Artorama or whatever general, like, big craft art supply retailer you have near you. Sometimes they could have um, really good deals. Another option you have is to go to a hardware store and purchase their giant sheets of wood. They can actually chop them up for you in the actual store. So you can just pick out a big sheet of birch wood. That's the one I prefer because it's the smoothest. Um, and then you can just tell them to chop it up to whatever sizes you need. I typically go with 16 by 20 and 11 by 14. Um, I usually tell them like, hey, can I get a couple 16 by 20s out of this? And then however many 11 by 14s you can. They're very easy sizes for them to 
accommodate um, and they don't you know I don't want to be too much of a pain in the ass so I just go with that then when you get home you can sand it and prime it with gesso which I have a video about as well uh, if you're interested about priming wood panels and then just get to work and paint another option you have is to get canvas paper I just hit myself in the head with this this is basically like just canvas texture it's not I don't know if it's paper actually yeah it is I really don't know what this is made out of but you can just paint on it with oil paint. They also have special paper for oil painting. It's like a type of cardstock, I'm not sure, but they do coat it so that you can actually use it for oils. This one is canvas textured, but if you prefer smooth texture, they do have that available. Um, you can probably find them at Blick and Jerry's Artorama online, honestly. I'm pretty sure this was $8 at Michael's or like $7.99 or whatever marketing trick they use to make you think you're paying less. Um, but I used a 40% off coupon on it because I am cheap. Yeah, I actually really like this. I purchased this particularly for doing oil painting tutorials. These are 9 by 12 inches. And another cool thing you can do is you can chop it up into the sizes you need and essentially get more paintings out of it. It came with 10 sheets, which is actually a pretty good deal considering that I got it with a coupon. So, yeah. I didn't want to use wood panels for the tutorials, so like a lot of simple paintings that people can follow along with, I'm going to be doing tutorials with this. Also working smaller uh, helps save money, especially when you're starting out because you can create more paintings and you don't feel like you're wasting paint, it gives you a lot of practice, you get more variety, so yeah, that's what I would suggest is just to work on smaller paintings until you feel more comfortable with the medium and you decide you want to work on a much bigger canvas, then by all means, go for it, but we are talking about budgeting here so this is a wonderful option for that. So those are my little tips for oil painting on a budget. Thank you for watching. I hope this video has been helpful for you. Let me know in the comments if you have a really awesome money saving tip for artists that I did not mention or might not know about. I would love to hear. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a beautiful week and I'll see you next time. Bye guys!